Thou has loved. Thou has loved. Thou has loved us. Loved us.
And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for once again blessing us with this opportunity that we would be able to come into this, thy place of worship, that we would gather ourselves together as a body of one, preparing our hearts and our minds to hear from thee. And Father, we just ask that that which you allow us to hear today, that you would compel us by your spirit that we would live out what we hear and understand, that we would be doers of your word and not just hearers alone. And to that, we would be ever so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory that is due unto thee. And we ask it all in the name of Christ Jesus and for his sake, amen. Never alone. He promised. I thank our choir for that ministry and song. And just for a few minutes, we would like to draw your attention to the book of First Peter. I'm going to be reading from the NIV. But First Peter, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. First Peter, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice, which is evil, and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babes, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, the living stone that was rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in the scripture it says, See, I lay in Zion, or I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message which is also what they were destined for. But you 
are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You may be seated. I'd like to thank the pastor for blessing me with this opportunity to share the word of God with you. And to my brothers of the ministry, God bless you. Uh, just as an addition to what we read in First Peter, I would like to add this as well out of the 21st chapter of Matthew, beginning at verse 42. I will read it aloud. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scripture the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone the Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. But upon anyone whom the stone falls, they will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. I would just like for a moment to speak about the significance of the chief cornerstone. Peter in first, uh, Peter he was speaking these things to the believers because these were trying times. And the believers were encountering a lot of issues and they were suffering from persecution. And because of the issues that they were confronted with, some of them were being persuaded to succumb to the pressure. And Peter was trying to alarm and alert them that they should not give in to the pressures, but they should stand firm on their foundation, which is Christ. So he began by telling them that in order to do these things, we first need to rid ourselves of some elements that cause us to stumble and fall while trying to stand on the firm foundation. And he said, evil and manipulation and deceit, lying, hypocrisy, envy and jealousy, slander and gossip, and tearing each other down. Instead of building us up, he said that these were some of the things that we were adopting because 
of the pressures that were imposed upon us. But then he reminded us upon who we were standing. <laughs> and he not only reminded us about who we were standing on, but he also said that we ourselves were lively stones. So just for a minute, I want to talk about the power of the stone so that we can see the power that lies within us. When foundations are determined, the size of the stone, the depth of the stone, the length of the stone, these issues are contemplated based upon the soil that the, so the stone is seated in and the height of the structure that is intended to be built. The soil that the stone is placed in and the height of the structure that is intended to be built. Therefore, there is a testing or an investigation done into the type of soil that the stone is placed. And the one who determines the size of the stone first must take into account the soil that the foundation will rest upon. So before we encounter the stone, since the stone is determined by the soil that it rests in, let's look at the characteristics of the soil. To narrow it down, we just want to look at three types of soils. There is a type A, a type B, and a type C soil. The type A soil, of course, is the best. The soil is called a clay soil. It has cohesive properties. The cohesiveness of the soil allows it to come together and join and interlock. And even the most common of us knows good soil because you can stick your hand and pull out a clunk of dirt, take it and rub it between your hands to about the diameter of a pencil. If you can then take that piece of clay and hold it up and it does not separate, then it is considered good, cohesive clay soil because it stays together. So one of the things that the builders look at is, are we building upon good, cohesive soil? that will stay together. 
that will understand that the qualities that reside in the soil that we are a part of connects us, but it doesn't disconnect us. The disconnection is viewed as a weakness in the soil that has to be compensated for so that when the foundation is sitting upon it, it is already taken into account that there are some elements within this soil that may cause it to separate. There's another type of soil. It's called granular soil, and it's gritty. It has a problem staying connected because it has angular shapes to it that don't readily interlock. When they are dry because of the temperature outside of the soil, it is easy for them to become fissured, which simply means to separate. And then because they do, the tables upon which they rest are not connected. Therefore, there is considered a weakness. There's a bed in the soil that has a gray color to it, which is the granular level. And to also compensate for the fact that it has the potential to separate Therefore, the foundation must be built so that it also compensates for a possible separation. There is another type of soil, and it's called a sandy soil. And the sandy soil cannot withstand a lot of pressure because it is gritty it is sand, it does not readily connect and have cohesive properties. There has to be something added. When sand is wet, you can form it into a shape, but when it dries out and the water of life is removed from it, the wind can blow it to and fro from one direction to another. Therefore, the builder must understand if there is sand beds in my soil, my foundation must also compensate for the fact that when it's wet, it has substance. But when it dries up, it flows like chafe in the wind. The point being is, is that the foundation, the stone that the builders rejected, it does not discount any soil. It is prepared to take on the characteristics of any soil type, whether it is sand or clay or granular, or rock, or seeping beds, it is already taken into account the flaws that may be present in the soil. And when they select the stones, the stones are a solid mass. There is no break in the stone. The soil has compressive strength based upon its type from a half to two tons per square foot. We are sitting on tile right now that is 12 inches by 12 inches 
that's one square foot. The soil is measured by the dimensions of the tile. And each individual tile, based upon the soil type, is able to withstand from 1,000 to 4,000 pounds compressed down onto it. In some of the oldest structures that we have, the stones that were used, some weighed 5, 10, 15, 20 tons each by themselves because the builder understood the soil that it was sitting upon. The builder understands the soil that it is nested in. He understands our weaknesses. He understands our moments where certain things come in and they contaminate our soil. He also knows what the offfall of that is going to be. He knows that the soil is going to have the possibility to shift from one spot to another. So he enlarges his foundation so that even if we shift, we are still a part of his foundation. He enlarges the foot of his foundation because he knows that sometimes certain parts of us receive outside elements that sometimes bring us substance, but they also sometimes dry us up. And when that happens, there's a possibility that we might move off of the location we once had. And to allow for that shift, he extends his foundation out so he can compensate for that weight moving over here when it was anticipated to be concentrated here. All right. He takes all of that into consideration. And now, I just briefly want to discuss the stone itself. All right. Amen. The stone, the scripture said that it was destined for us. It was even requested by us. The Jews stumbled upon the stone because they were looking for a sign and the scripture tells us out of, I believe it is the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians, if I'm not mistaken. But the scripture tells us that the Greek, that they stumbled on it as well because they were being revered because they were keen in philosophy and knowledge. And so they were looking for the stone just to represent and affirm their knowledge and their philosophy. But the stone said that the wisdom of man is foolishness unto God. And therefore, they couldn't receive the stone. And Daniel talked about the stone himself, and he said it would be the measure by which the Gentile world domination or dominion would fall, which is that domination we are under right now. And he said that the stone would be a stone that would be cut without the use of hands, as though it was pulled out of the side of a mountain. And that when it fell upon the Gentile world power, that it would bring it to its end, that it would also fill the earth with its presence. This is Christ Jesus. He is the stone that the builders rejected. But look at what he provided. The stone 
has compulsive strength. Now today, as we build, our stones have what we call reinforcement. We put rebars or iron into the concrete because stones have compressive strength, but they don't have any tensile strength. And what that says is, is that we want the stone upon which we stand to be able to bear our weight, but the stone doesn't have any flexibility to it. Jesus Christ, today, yesterday, and forever, the same. He does not change. Amen. He doesn't have any flexibility in his presence because he is to bear the flaws of all of us. All right. yeah. Well, we don't want that which is bearing our flaw to also have a flaw. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, the stone doesn't have any tensile strength because it is not used so that it flexes under pressure, but so that it withstands the pressure. All right, all right. So as we look at the possibilities, we'll notice another factor that I would like to bring to our consciousness, to our thought as we think about this. When we look at structures, and we see there are tall presence, and there are 30 and 40 and 50, 60, 70 stories tall. We are in awesome wonder as to look at the structure, look how tall it is. Look at the reflection off the side of the building. But no one looks at the height and thinks about the foundation. The foundation is not present when we look at the finished structure. But if the foundation is not sound, if it is not sturdy, if it is not strong, if it's not pure, if it has any weaknesses in it, then no matter how tall the structure is, it is doomed for failure because its foundation is not rooted. But the foundation, as we look at the height of the structure, the foundation is not what you can see. The real foundation is not something that is tangible, that you can touch. It's not the things that are, etern are external. It is the internal things that it is built upon. And too many times, structures are built by bypassing the foundation. And then there is a wonderment as to why the structure failed. Sometimes we come in at the 10th floor. We don't even speak to people from floor one to nine. Because they are beneath us. Not realizing that the stone took into account that there would be people that would have weaknesses in the structure. There would be people that would have leakages in the structure. There would be people that would have cracks in the structure. And the structure took it into account and said, I will be the foundation for all people at all times, regardless of what the problem may be. Some people rise to the top 
They act as though they don't have any fear of those beneath them. Sometimes the ones that are bearing the weight. I remember the pastor mentioned years ago about an organ player. You all remember the story. <laughs> and one person was getting all the praise for the music. And someone pulled the plug on the organ player. And the one who was getting all the praise and all the hype, once the music disappeared, the attention, it also disappeared. And they began to wonder, what happened? No one had seen the organ because he was down in a hole and no one paid him any attention. They gave him no acknowledgments, no recognition, but they loved the music. But as soon as it disappeared, they wanted to know what happened to the organ, what happened to the music. And all of a sudden, now, the one who they couldn't see all of a sudden had some significance, had purpose, had meaning. People at the top, the scripture said that if you fall on me, you will be broken but I am the potter. I can put the pieces back together again. But if I fall on you, you will be crushed into powder. So, as I leave, all I wanted to say is to honor the stone that the builders rejected. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer.